name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, 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 um, um, we've been talking um, uh, throughout um, um, Recharge Wednesday about the desire to seek the Lord. The desire to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, 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 and I want to believe that um, it is important, especially in this era, in this time, that as a child of God, you must sharpen your desire to seek God. Oh, can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? You, 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 you must keep check your desire to seek the Lord. It is important, child of God, that, that, that and especially at this time, where there are a lot of things that are pulling our attention, there are a lot of things that need our attention, a lot of things that need us to take care of. Please, you must make sure that the number one thing in your life must be to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, we're living at a time where they're talking about economic meltdown. They're talking about uh, uh, unemployment that is affecting the youth. And, and right now, especially under, under this, this uh, uh, COVID regulations and lockdown, whatever, it's, it's no longer about the youth, unemployment of the youth. It's affecting everybody else. Companies are cutting heads and they're retrenching left, right and center. And everybody is seeking for himself. Everybody wants to make sure that at least I'm fine. Everybody wants to make sure that at least I've got a job. Everybody is looking for their security. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Everybody wants to make sure that they are secure. But I want to challenge the church that in the midst of you seeking out for your own security, in the midst of you seeking out for your own things, please do not lose your desire to seek the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. Don't, look, don't lose your desire to seek the Lord. You can rather lose everything else that you have, but do not lose your desire to seek the Lord. Because once you lose your desire, we taught this last week, once you lose your desire, you lose your passion. Hallelujah. And, and you come to church because it has become a habit to come to church. Hello, somebody? And you come to church the same person, you still leave after church and you are still the same person. Because you came to church, you did not desire for the Lord. And, and, and this is a challenge with many of us. That many of us have come to church, you come to the building, but you don't meet God. May God help us. Amen. Oh, can I get an amen tonight? May God help us that we are not after the things of this world. Paul says in the book of Romans 12, he says, do not conform to the standards of the world. Or oh, somebody shout and say standards. Uh, somebody shout and say standards. So therefore, if Paul says standards of the world, which means there is another standard. Ah, are you hearing me? Tell your neighbor tonight as a neighbor. There is another standard that you belong to. Hello? No, 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 no. no. Paul says, do not conform. Do not conform to the standard of the world. Hello, he's speaking to the, to, to, to the Christian church. He, he's speaking to those that were Gentiles and now have received Christ as their personal savior. He says, don't conform to the standard of the world because the moment you are transformed, you cannot conform. Hallelujah. He says, don't conform to the standard of the world because when you receive Christ, Christ upgrades you to another standard. What is this standard? This is the heavenly standard. Which means you are no longer governed by the laws of this world. You live in this world, but you are not governed by the laws of this world. Hallelujah, somebody. Therefore, part of our standard as children of God, part and parcel of the standard is to seek the Lord. Part and parcel of our standard is to make time, have a personal time in your private closet and say, this is my time to seek the Lord. Ask your neighbor tonight and say, neighbor, do you have time to seek the Lord? We are living in a time where we've got busy schedules. We wake up in the morning, 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, we are up. Some of us, we, they told us that work starts at 9, but by 6 o'clock you are already working because this life has become too busy. But can I challenge you tonight, never become too busy that in such a way that you don't have time to seek God. Hallelujah. And be careful 
be careful of the blessings that come upon your life that the blessings do not become a stumbling block hallelujah somebody hallelujah somebody some of us before we started working we had ample time to seek God we had all the time in the world to pray we had all the time in the world to worship and, and now that God has answered our prayers the same thing that God answered us with it is the same thing that God is stop, I mean it's the same thing that is stopping us to seek God who gave it to us oh come and lift up your right hand and say in the name of Jesus oh come and shout and say in the name of Jesus I'm going to have the desire to seek the Lord Psalm 27 David says one thing verse number 4 that's where we are one thing have I desired of the Lord hallelujah one thing have I desired of the Lord and, 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 and he said that I will seek after amen now understand this he says the one thing that I've desired it is of the Lord uh, are you hearing scripture tonight he says the thing that I'm desiring has got an attachment somewhere therefore I cannot get the thing unless I access that which is attached to it okay the thing that I'm desiring it's contained somewhere hello somebody it is contained somewhere therefore for me to access this one thing I must go through that which contains it that's why David says this one thing that I'm desiring it is of the Lord it, or listen to me church it the, the thing that I'm desiring it does not belong to me it belongs to the Lord hallelujah somebody it belongs to the Lord therefore you must understand that I cannot desire that which belongs to the Lord I cannot seek that which belongs to the Lord without me knowing the Lord first therefore I must have a relationship with the Lord so that he can be able to release freely that which he has so that he can give it to me hallelujah 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 somebody hallelujah that is why when I say when 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 when, when I say my Cindy can I have 20 rands because you see I don't say give me 20 rands I start by pronouncing relationship when I call her name I get her attention when I call her name she answers because we've got a relationship therefore I start to make requests and my request is founded on the relationship that I have with her what am I saying tonight? What I'm saying tonight is that your seeking of the Lord, your seeking of the Lord, it must be founded in a relationship with God. You cannot seek after that which you don't have a relationship with. David says, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I'm seeking of the Lord, but I also want to dwell in the house of the Lord hallelujah it says all the days of my life to behold the beauty and to inquire in his temple hello somebody now let's go to verse 5 let's go to verse 5 I'm gonna move quickly listen he says for in the time of trouble no 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 understand my, my, my seeking has got an objective I'm not just seeking listen to me he says I'm not seeking because I'm in trouble no I am seeking before trouble comes. You see, this is a challenge with many of us. We want to, we always start seeking God when things are breaking. We, we, we always want to seek God when, when we have become desperate. We, we always start to seek God when things are not going well. But it was not so with David. David says, I, I am seeking the Lord. I want to dwell in his temple. I want to behold his beauty. For in the time of trouble. Now, if he says in the time of trouble, which therefore means when he is seeking the one thing, he is not yet in trouble. But he's got the revelation and the understanding that times of trouble are coming. Therefore, for me to remain safe, are you hearing me tonight? For me to remain safe, for me to remain sane, I must seek the Lord when time of trouble comes. You see, you, you, you are going crazy, you are losing your mind 
Because before trouble came, you never prepared for trouble. Listen to me. Do, you are still on earth. And Jesus says in the book of John chapter 16, verse number 33, he says, he says, in this world, you will go through trials and tribulation. Hallelujah, somebody. He says, these things are going to happen to you in the world. I also experienced it when I was with you in the world. Hallelujah. Can I submit to you tonight that the world is full of tribulation? Can I submit to you tonight that the world is full of trials and tribulation? Life is difficult to afford to. Life, sometimes you, you, you wake up in the morning and you feel so energized to do this life thing. The following day, you wake up in the morning, you don't want to do it anymore. Life is full of trials. It's full of troubles. It's full of problems. Such is life. You are not alone. Who's got problems? Some of us have just mastered the art of hiding them. But all of us have got problems. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. You must understand that when the sun is shining in your area, don't laugh at those that are in their evening. Because times of trouble is going to come. But what's going to make you to be sustained in the times of trouble is that you seek the Lord before trouble comes. What's going to make you to stand in the times of trouble is that you seek of the Lord. You seek after the Lord so that the Lord must keep you in the time of trouble. So that the, whole, the Lord must hold you in the time of trouble. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We seek him. Now listen, David says, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. Amen? Amen. I said this last week, that he does not remove me out of trouble, but he hides me in the trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. He does what? Oh, are you listening to that? He does what? He, he hides me. Hello? In his pavilion. Oh, can, can, we, can we agree tonight? That when trouble comes, when trouble comes to you, there is the pavilion of the Lord that is inside the trouble. When trouble comes to you, the Lord will always make a way of escape, a way of survival for you. Hallelujah, somebody. And, and, and now, many of us, we do not get to the pavilion. Because when trouble comes, listen to me, Mukundi, when trouble comes, we stop seeking that which is supposed to hide us and we do not get to the pavilion. Therefore, we melt on the way to the pavilion. You, you, the trouble shouldn't have the hang of you. It shouldn't have the better of you. Now, what I'm teaching tonight, I'm teaching you wisdom that when trouble comes, seek the pavilion of the Lord in the midst of trouble. When trouble comes, don't pray. Change your prayer from today. Don't pray that God must save you from the trouble. Begin to pray and say, Lord, in the midst of what I'm going through, hide me in your pavilion. I'm going to show you right now. Hide me in your pavilion. Ask, I mean, shake your neighbor as a neighbor. The Lord shall hide you in his pavilion. Not only his pavilion, listen, he says, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. Hallelujah. In the what? In the secret place. But all these things are happening in times of trouble. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. Now let's jump to 2 Kings chapter 4. Mama, do you have a mic there? 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 4. Let's rush there. Can, 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 we, can we give Mama Ayo a microphone quickly? 2 Kings chapter 4. Let, let's, let's start from verse number 18. Verse 18. Yes. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse number uh, 18. Let's go. And the child grew. Now it happened that one day that he went out to his father. Yes. To the reapers. And he said to his father, My head, my head. So he said to a servant, Carry him to his mother. When he had taken him through, he, he, when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. Yes. 
And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him, and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of your young men and one of the donkeys, that I may run to the man of God and come back. Yeah. 23. So he said, Why are you going to him today? It's neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, It is well. Then she settled a donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. Yeah. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Camel. So it was when the man of God saw her far off, afar off, that he said to his servant Gehazi, Look, the Shunamite, the Shunamite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Mm -hmm. Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet, but Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she said, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not answer him. But lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, leaves i will not leave you so he arose and followed her now gehazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child but there was neither voice nor hearing therefore he went back to meet him and told him saying the child has not awakened yeah just leave it there hallelujah somebody Amen. now if you if, if you read the bible you must understand here that this is this this is a time where 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 the Shunammite woman uh, 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 begins to uh, pick up uh, uh, the servant of God Elisha, and she says, "I perceive to a husband, I perceive that the man that is passing by here is a man of God." And if you read it from the beginning, it will show you right there that she built an upper room for this man of God. And 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 Elisha begins to speak to Gehaz and says to Gehaz, "What shall we do for this woman of God?" Hello, somebody. What shall we do for this woman of God? And Gehaz begins to tell Elisha and said, she does not have a child. And indeed, it was prophesied upon the woman that next year, about this time, you're going to have a child. You're going to conceive. And indeed, she did conceive. And the boy was born. You must understand that the woman was so right in telling Elisha that I did not ask this child. I did not ask this child. This child I was given. I was given by the Lord. How was she given the child? She was given the child because she was beginning to seek the Lord. How did she seek the Lord? She received a revelation that the man that is coming here, that keeps on passing by here, is a man of God. And the man of God did not contribute any money in the building of the upper room. Hello, somebody. Which means she went out of her way to make sure that the upper room is built for the man of God. Now the child comes. And one day, that's where we are tonight. The Bible says one day when the father took the child to the field, the child began to say, my head, my head. Are you with me tonight? The, the, the child began to cry and say, my head, my head. I've, I've got a headache. And, and the father, listen to what the father says. The father speaks to the servant and tells the servant and says, please take the child back to the mother. Hallelujah, somebody. Take the child back to the mother. Now, the, watch here where we are. I love verse number 18. Read verse 18, mama, one more time. I, I, I love how verse number 18 begins right there. Listen to how the statement starts in verse 18. Read it. And the child grew. Listen. What God gave, it began to grow. Hmm. Ah, continue. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to uh -huh. the reapers. Yes. And he said to his father, my head, my head. Aha, uh -huh. listen. The child did what? 
He grew. Somebody say he grew. Somebody say he grew. Now when the child grows, the child comes with problems. Eh? When the child grows, headaches begin to come. When the child begins to grow, issues begin to arise because every growth in your life presents its own challenges. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you do not want challenges in your life, stop to grow. If you don't want accountability and responsibility in your life, stop to grow. But the more you grow, the more the challenges. The more you grow. Listen, when you were young, you never used to think about grocery. You never used to think about petrol. But the more you grow, you must think, what am I going to eat tomorrow? How, how, how am I going to move tomorrow? It comes with growth. So it happened to the Shunammite woman. When the child grew, the Bible says, the child began to say, my head, my head. And so he said to the servant, carry him back to the mother. Now the child was brought back to the mother. I want you to watch the order. Watch the order. Watch the order. The child was taken from the father and says, carry him back to the mother. And it, the child was brought to the mother. Watch verse number 20 as we read. Verse number 20. Listen to it. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, yes, he sat on her knees till noon. Uh -huh. and Listen. Died. The blessing was brought back to the mother. And when it was brought back to the mother, the Bible says he sat on her knees till noon. Then he did what? Ah, oh, come on, talk to me. He did what? He died. he died. He did not start by dying. He was with the father, stage number one. When he was with the father, he was carried back to the mother. When he was with the mother, he sat on the mother and he died. Hello, somebody. Somebody shout and say he died. Or somebody shout and say he died. God gave him to the mother. But when he was with the father, he began to be sick. When he came to the mother, he died. But he did not come from the father. He did not come from the mother. He was not even requested. He came from God. Hello, somebody. Which means, child of God, what am I saying tonight? Anything that God gives you, listen to me, that God gives you also has a potential of dying. Oh, am I talking to somebody tonight? When God has blessed you, don't be too much excited about bubbling in the blessing and lose the connection to the God that gave you the blessing because the moment you lose the connection, the baby begins to say, my head, my head. And it will not end with the head. All of a sudden, the baby dies while sitting on your laps and you might be here tonight and the baby has been sitting on your lap and as I'm talking right now, the baby has died and you keep on carrying the baby around and you say Ngawe, Ngawe. You, you are pretending like the baby is alive yet the baby is dead the baby has died in your laps but watch I don't want to dwell too much there verse number 21 as we continue right there read for me right there and she went ah stage number three that baby died and she went up. Oh, oh. Somebody say she went up. She went up. Somebody say she went up. She went Where up. did she go? Read, Mama. And laid him on the bed of the men of God. She went up after the baby died. Listen to me. The baby got sick in the field. The baby was brought in her lap. And the baby died in her lap. When the baby died in her lap, then she went up. Can I submit to somebody tonight that when the baby dies on your lap, don't bury the baby. Begin your way to go up to the Lord. Begin your way up to go seek the Lord. It is not time to sing Amagugu. It's time to seek the Lord. It's not time to give up on life. It's time to seek the Lord. The Shunammite woman, she said, I did not ask for the child. The Shunammite woman says, I did not request the child. Child, but I know where the child comes from. I know that one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that one thing I will seek after 
for in the times of trouble my time of trouble has come and I must seek after the one thing the Bible says she went up she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God she laid the child on the bed of the man of God she oh shake your neighbor tonight and say neighbor lay your problem on the bed of the man of God lay your problem in the presence of the God that gave you lay your problem in the presence of the God that blessed you that's what the Shunammite woman did but it did not end there and I'm gonna say I'm gonna end now verse number 22 let's read then she called to her husband and said Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys. Yes. That I may run to the man of God. She said to her husband, what did she say? Please send me one of the young men. She did not tell the husband about the problem that had just happened. She did not discuss with her husband about the baby that has just died. Because she said, I'm a woman on a mission. It does not matter what has surrounded me. But I know that when times of trouble have come, I must seek God in spite of. I must seek God despite of. Can I submit to somebody tonight? When times of trouble have come, don't discuss your trouble with those that have surrounded you. When times of trouble have come. Don't discuss your trouble huh, with the people huh, that are just watching you huh, because huh, after you discuss it huh, they will just watch you. Huh. Be like a Shunammite woman. Huh. She said to the husband huh, give me a servant huh, with a donkey. Give me a servant. I need a donkey because I need to seek the Lord. Huh. There's a dead child huh, but the dead child huh, will not stop me huh, to seek the Lord. Huh. There's a problem in the house huh, but the problem in the house uh, will not stop me uh, to seek the Lord. Uh, don't allow the death situation uh, to hinder you uh, from seeking the Lord. Uh, you can address your death situation uh, and say you are dead uh, but I'm going to see you uh, later uh, after I have sought the Lord. Uh, I know things are broken uh, but brokenness, uh, depression, anxiety, mental, uh, mental uh, anxiety I'm not going to attend to you uh, but I'm going to seek the Lord. Uh, I know things are not going well my sister but in spite of her and despite of her rise up take the baby put the baby on the bed of the man of God begin to push your way out begin to move begin to shakatalabasetele and people say she's crazy she's abnormal I'm not abnormal I know that one thing have I desired when I started it was not about the baby when I built the upper house it was not about the blessing when I called the man of God it was not about the blessing it was all about saving God I did not come to be blessed I did not come to use God as a blesser I came to save him whether the blessing dies or the blessing does not die but I'm gonna serve the Lord I'm gonna serve the Lord in my midnight hour I'm gonna serve the Lord whether people understand or don't understand whether situation is conducive or not conducive but I'm gonna serve the Lord because one thing I'm seeking after listen as I close the Bible says this woman she got on a donkey says please send me a young man with one of your donkeys that I may walk is that what scripture says? But scripture says that I may run to the man of God and come back. Ah, <laughs> guys, you guys are not hearing scripture. The woman says, the child is dead, but I need to run. I'm going to run to the man of God. But she says, I won't stay at the man of God. I'm coming back. <laughs> she says, I'm going to the house of the Lord. I'm going into the presence of the Lord. I'm running there for my Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the rushes, they don't walk to it but they run to it. Listen to me. We will not seek God at the same speed because we don't have the same child that is dead. 
as we will not seek God at the same passion. We will not seek God at the same rate because we don't have the same problem. We don't have the same challenges. We don't come from the same background. Therefore, child, don't compare your seeking with your neighbor seeking. When your neighbor is yearning, when your neighbor is sleeping and not praying, when your neighbor is playing church, you say, I'm going to run to the Lord. 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 My seeking is not meant for walking, but my seeking is meant for, for, for running because I understand I don't have much time. If I walk, I might find the situation worsened. If I walk, I might find those that are not supposed to know about the situation now knowing about the situation. But I need to run to the Lord. But I'm not going to come back in vain. She says, I'm going to come back. I'm not going to be disappointed. I'm going to come back. Shake your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm running to the Lord. But I'm going to come back. Oh, shout and say, I'm going to come back. Shout and say, I'm going to come back. The baby's dead, but baby, don't worry. Don't be weary. I'm going to come back. I'm coming back. I'm going to come back strong. I'm going to come back bad. I'm going to come back wiser than I was before. I'm going to come back with much more power, with much more strength, with much more faith. I decree and declare tonight that my sister, my brother, when you go into the presence of the Lord, you will not come back empty-handed, but you are coming back full of favor. You are coming back full of grace. You are coming back full of anointing. You are coming back full of power. You are coming back full of gosh. I'm coming back. I'm going to come back. Let's close. I'm going to come back. Read Mama first 23. My God, my time. Uh, so he said, uh -huh. why are you going to him? Why are you going to him? It's neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. You see, and there are those said, that are around you. Hold it there. There are those that are around you that they are seeking God is seasonal. There are those that are around you that seek God when things are well. There are those that are around you that seek God because it's a Sunday. There are those that are around you that will seek God because it's a Sabbath. But I refuse. I refuse. My seeking God is not because it's a Sabbath. My seeking God is not determined by calendar and government holiday. But my seeking God is every day's business. Actually, it's a lifestyle. I have become a seeker of God. I have become Come, the one that seeks after God even when I'm sleeping in the hospital bed when I'm taking my last breath but I'm gonna take my last breath seeking after God whether it's a new moon or no Sabbath but I'm gonna seek after God listen to the woman continue why are you going to him it's neither new moon nor Sabbath why are you going to him and she said uh -huh. it is well somebody shout and say it is well, it is well. somebody shout say it is well it is not well when you are not seeking. It is well when you are sure of that which you seek. It is well when you know of that which you seek. It is well when you know of that which you serve. It is well when you know that my God is greater than this situation. It is well when you know that there is nothing impossible with my God. It is well when you know that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. It is well when you know even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear. It is well when you know when I go through the fires, he said he will be with me. When I go through the waters, he said they will not drown me. It is well because I know that I know that I know that I know that my God is with me. It is well. It is well when you seek God, when things are not well, but it is well with me. Because my, my inside wellness is not determined by the outside. But my inside wellness is determined by the one who is inside me. Because greater is he that is on the inside of me than he that is in the world. Somebody shout and say, it is well. Or oh, somebody shout and say it is well. I don't know how you left your situation at home, but shout and say it is well. I don't know what your boss has told you, but shout and say it is well. I don't know what your husband told you, but shout and say it is well. Oh, you, you have just ended now. The salary has just come in your account, but things are not coming together. Shout and say it is well. Shout and say it is well. I've not come to play church, but I've come to release this word upon somebody's spirit. Shout and say it is well 
It is well. It is well. I've come to speak to my brother. It is well. It is well. It is well. It is well. Mama is sick, but it is well. It is well. There's no one to turn back to, but it is well. It is well. The future looks like it's dark and doom, but I've come to say it is well. Seek after the Lord. It's going to be well. Seek after the Lord. Everything shall make sense. Seek after the Lord. Let's close. Read verse 24. It is well. My God, my God, Lord, Lord, thank you. Listen to me. Listen to then me. she settled. Hold it there, Mama. Hold it there. She did not start. I did not know this about the scripture. She did not start by saying it is well when she saw the man of God. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Even when she saw the husband, which scripture does not tell us whether he was a Christian or not Christian, but whether, whether, whether she was surrounded by those of the same faith or not, but her faith was never contaminated. She says it is well. Read. Then she settled a donkey uh -huh. and said to her servant, uh -huh. drive and oh, go drive. forward. Drive and go forward. Oh, that's a word for somebody tonight. Do I've come to speak. I've come to speak to my brother. Drive yeah. and go forward. Drive don't, and go don't forward. Don't drive and go back. Drive and go forward. Amen. Don't drive and turn back to your own destruction. Drive and go forward. Your way is not backward. Your way is going forward. I know forward looks like a flood is coming. But I've come to speak to you right there online. You can tweet this tonight and say drive and go forward. Drive and go forward in your business. Drive and go forward in your life. Drive and go forward in your family. Drive and go forward in your job. Drive, drive, drive. Drive and go forward. Continue right there. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell do you. Do not slacken the pace for who? Unless I do what? I tell you. She says, seven, don't slacken the pace. I've come to speak to you, my sister. Don't slacken the pace. It's not the season to slacken. Don't slow down. Keep on rushing. Drive at 200 kilometers per hour. If it gets to 300 like a GTI, get to 300 because where we are going, we need to get there. We must seek child of God. You don't know the hour. You don't know the time. You don't know when he's going to show up. If the trumpet is not yet blown, if the trumpet has not yet been sounded, I've come to speak to somebody under the sound of my voice. Begin to drive and begin to go forward and don't slow down. Keep on going forward. Keep on going forward. Keep on pushing forward. Keep on transforming yourself and say, I'm going forward. Verse 25. And so she departed Hi. and went to the man of God at the she did what? She departed. She did what? She departed. She did what? She departed. All that we were speaking about, she was speaking. But all that she spoke, she acted on it. Scripture says she departed. There are some of you tonight that must depart. She departed. Continue. Oh my God. Oh, I can. I, oh, I can. And so she day. departed and went to the man of God at Mount Cameron. Yes. So it was when the men, men of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant Gehazi, uh -huh. Look, the Shunammite woman. Yes. Please run now to meet her. Yes. And say to her, Is it well with you? Uh -huh. Is it well with your husband? Yes. Is it well with your child? Yes. And she answered, uh -huh. It is well. Listen, 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 listen. Uh, what can I use? Come on, dear. Come on, dear. This is the Shunamite woman. She just, 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 just sit there. Just sit there. Just sit there. Scripture says, She departed. Uh huh. And, 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 and she ran to the man. Listen, just walk slowly, just walk slowly. Walk slowly because I need, I, need, I need to show this. Start it from the beginning because I need to show this very well. Listen, listen, listen. Scripture says she departed. Yeah. When she departed, the man of God was departing as well. You are not hearing me. When she departed, the man of God was beginning to be watchful. The man of God knew in the sixth sense, in the spiritual sense, that there's a woman that's coming. That's why when she was still a far off, the Bible says, he says to Gehaz, it's not Gehaz that saw her. It's not the woman that saw the man of God. It is the man of God that saw her. He says, he says hey, Gehaz, the Shunammite woman is coming. Go and meet her. Ah, you are not hearing me. Listen to me. When you begin to seek God, will God will begin to seek after you. 
When you begin to seek God, God will meet you at your point of need. When you begin to seek God, God will meet you right there. We're at a position when you feel like nobody cares about you. Nobody wants to talk to you. But God is coming out of his seat. As we taught on Sunday, he, what is man that you're mindful of? That you visit him. He's going, when the Shunammite woman was coming. God has already sent an angel. God meets, and the angel Gehaz, meets, 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 meets the woman. He says, is it well with your house? Is it well with your son? Is it well with your business? And the woman answers. It is well. It is well. Listen to me. She's not yet at the man of God. You can sit with him. She's not yet at the man of God. But it is, she says it is well. But this is what I want to, I want to close with. I want to go to scripture. But you can read it at home for the sake of time. The moment she spoke to Gehaz, she passed Gehaz and she continued seeking. She passed Gehaz. And because she did not come to Gehaz. Yeah. Listen to me. Listen to me. Your seeking must not be stopped by Gehaz of the church. You're, you can clap hands, my dear. Don't wait for others to clap hands. But you can clap hands for yourself because that's a word for you. Listen to me. There's a Gehaz in every relationship. There's a Gehaz in every church. And you seek and you come and you think Gehaz is the Lord. But Gehaz is not your Lord. And, and this is the problem. Some of, some of our Gehaz are our pastors. Some of our Gehaz are the intercessors. The Gehaz are the leaders of the church. And, and our desire is no longer about seeking God. We are seeking people. And we're, we're the same people when they fall off the grace, we, de, we, we follow, we fall and we, and we backslide. Because, not because God has backslided, not because God is no longer sitting on the throne, but because your seeking has diverted the direction. Bible says, she saw Gehaz. She answered Gehaz. It was not wrong to talk to Gehaz. But after answering Gehaz, she says, bye-bye. I know what I'm here for. Hallelujah. What am I saying tonight? Seek the Lord in spite of. Despite of. Seek the Lord. When the child has died, you continue seeking the Lord. And as you continue reading scripture, the Lord, you remember she said, I'm running and I'm coming back. Oh, she came back, but she did not come back alone. She came back with Gehaz. Gehaz could not do anything about the child. The man of God came. At the end of the, end, at the, end of the day, the same man that prophesied the child was the same man that resurrected the child. And the problem is that we've got a woman in the house that's trying to do his resuscitation herself. She's trying to resurrect herself. She thinks she can resurrect it. You don't have the power to resurrect it. It is the God that you seek. That has got the power to resurrect the child. Seek God in spite of. Spirit of a living God, we come to thy throne of grace. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, for men and women to rise in this era, in this time, O oh God, to seek after you. May the greatest thing in our lives be to seek you. May the greatest thing in our lives, Almighty oh God, be the desire to seek you. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, it does not matter what happens along the way, but we will continue seeking you. It does not matter what breaks along the way, but we will continue seeking you. I pray in the name of Jesus, even us as a church, help us that we become a church that seeks after you, that nothing shall take away our focus. Nothing shall hinder us to seek you. In the name of Jesus, for we know that as we have sought you, we will never come back alone. You are coming down to our situations. You are coming down to our trials and tribulations and you are coming down with an answer and a solution in Jesus mighty and precious name we pray and let the church shout and say amen or oh, somebody shout give God a hand of praise tonight